Thank you very much. Um, the, uh, this shul, I have to say, is one of the most welcoming shuls for us uh, in all of Toronto. Whenever we want to do a program, uh, you know, the door is open to us. And, uh, and frankly, if we don't call Rabbi Stern within a certain period of time, then he calls us to, uh, to ask about having a program. Uh, this is uh, really, it, it feels like home for us. So thank you very much. Um, I also apologize for the different numberings on the Hebrew and English sheets. I don't know if anyone had trouble with this at their table. I overheard a little bit. Yeah, the um, right. The uh, sorry. You figured it out. Good. Thank you. So the the topics I'd like to discuss this morning, over the next 45 minutes or so, to a, to an hour possibly, um, are. Uh, number one, the definition of Pirsume Nisa, what we mean when we say that we light the menorah in order to publicize the miracle of Hanukkah, where does that idea originate, and uh, what exactly are we trying to accomplish? Um, also, the definition of Kiddush Hashem, of sanctifying Hashem's name, because that ties into Pirsume Nisa, how we accomplish both when we light the menorah, and the question of whether we light the menorah for the world or for ourselves, as I put in the title, is the menorah a light to us or a light unto the nations? So we begin by looking at the issue of Pirsume Nisa in and of itself. Pirsume Nisa is an Aramaic term. It means publicizing the miracle. That's literally the term. You can hear related terms in Hebrew, obviously, nase, which we use to describe the public display of a miracle. And pirsum is, uh, is an advertisement, publicity. So pirsum nisa is the phrase that we use to indicate publicizing the miracle, in this case of Hanukkah. Note that pirsum nisa is not limited to Hanukkah. What are some other occasions when we engage in pirsum nisa? Sorry? Purim, right, with the Megillah. When? Someone said Pesach? Right? What do we do on Pesach? Let's presume Nisa. Oh, he opened the door. By the time we opened the door, it's actually time to recommend Ashok. Sorry? The Abacosos at the Seder in general, the Seder at the Four Cups in particular. But we have, we have the Seder in general. When Hashem performs a miracle for us, we publicize it. Why do we do that? So if you take a look at your sheets, the, um, the source I'd like to bring, I believe it's on both sheets, yes, it's source number... Uh, so now I'm going to get into trouble. On the Hebrew sheets, it's source number 13. On the English sheets, it's source number 12. If you see a sheet that has Hebrew and English, that's the English one. Yes, some of them are one, some of them are two. The, uh, so in any case, it's source number 12 is the one that you're, that you're looking for. From Rabbi Avram ben Arambam. Rabbi Avram, son of the Rambam, in his Chuvos Maase Nisim addresses the question of what we are doing when we engage in Pirsume Nisa, publicizing the miracles of Hanukkah. There are sheets available on some of the tables here. He says, well, I'm reading out of the Hebrew, because that's the sheet that I have in front of me. I gave out all the English ones, but I'll translate as I go along. He says, the sages said, Ki Hanukkah that saying halal on Hanukkah is a biblical mitzvah, which actually is subject to debate, but that's the quote here. Lo ki Hanukkah pirsume nisa. It's not that the celebration of Hanukkah is written in the Torah. You will not find Hanukkah mentioned in the Chumash. It doesn't happen until long afterwards. The, um, so that's not it. There's no mitzvah of publicize the miracle of Hanukkah in the Chumash. However, we link it to the biblical instruction of do not desecrate the name of Hashem your God. And they said, by way of explanation of that statement, from the fact that the Torah says, don't desecrate the name of Hashem, that means you should sanctify the name of Hashem. This is what we call the mitzvah of Kiddush Hashem. Sanctifying Hashem's name. And he continues to say, Therefore we are instructed to publicize miracles wherever they take place, whenever they take place. That's the idea of Pirsume Nisa according to this line in Rabbi Avram ben Arambam. And in general, that's the consensus. Is the idea that we publicize Hashem's miracles in order to sanctify His name. It's the fulfillment of Kiddush Hashem. If you take a look, it's source 14 on the Hebrew sheet, source 13 on the sheets that are Hebrew-English. The Beis Yosef, Rabbi Yosef Karo, commenting on the tour, says, because of Otam Acher, he's giving you several reasons. 
for, for lighting. And he says, Shu that it's in order to publicize the miracle before the entire nation. And to arrange the brachos, he's talking about Hallel, in front of them, because that has great publicity for Hashem, the Kiddush Shemo, and a sanctification of his name, when we bless Hashem in great gatherings. So the idea is, we are Hashem's ad man team. We are the advertisers for Hashem. The, uh, we let the world know what happened on, uh, on Hanukkah, on Purim, on Pesach, whenever there is a miracle that, uh, that Hashem performs for us. That's the origin of Pirsume Nisa. When it comes to menorah lighting, though, the mitzvah of lighting the menorah is actually separate from Pirsum, from publicizing the miracle, according to many authorities. We'll see the debate on it, but according to many authorities, they are separate. You can see that right off the bat in the Gemara in Shabbos. I brought it at the beginning of your source sheets as source number one. The Gemara in Shabbos discusses the mitzvah of lighting the menorah and says, Mevarech, you make the bracha of Asher Kiddushanu b'mitzvah sav, v'tzivadu l'hadlik ner shel Hanukkah. There's a debate about the word shell. How many people here say the word shell in the bracha? Some? How many people don't? Well, by definition, I hope that's the rest. The, um, it doesn't work so well in the song if you do it, if you do it without the shell. It's hard to make it work, right? L'hadlik ner Hanukkah. Right, so you have to sort of drain the words out a little bit in order to make it work. The, um, but in any case, the Gemara here, in the version that I brought here, includes the word shell. There's a whole discussion about why you would include or not include the word shell. It's, not, it's actually not just a peripheral issue. The, uh, it's about the, the ner being the definition of Hanukkah, as opposed to being an element that we associate with Hanukkah. Those who say ner Hanukkah do so because it's it's what makes Hanukkah. That's the mitzvah of, uh, of Hanukkah. Nonetheless, that's a side note. The Gemara says, we make the bracha of, thank you Hashem for sanctifying us with your mitzvahs and instructing us to light the menorah. So the Gemara asks, v'heichan sivanu. Where did Hashem ever instruct us to light the menorah? You won't find that anywhere in the Chumash. There's no such thing. And the Gemara presents us with two answers. Rav Avia Omar Milot Hasur. Rav Avia says, because the Torah says, you shall not stray from after the instructions of the Rabbanon. This is an instruction of the Rabbanon. Side note, that leads to a great debate about whether that means that all rabbinic mitzvot are therefore biblical. Because now you've tied in this the Rabbanon and said, well, it's a fulfillment of Lot Hasur. You shall not stray. Maybe. Rav Nechemia Omar Sha'al Avicha V'yagedcha Zekeinecha V'yomru Lach. Rav Nechemia says, different source, similar idea. We are taught to ask our ancestors and they will instruct us. Ask our elders and they will teach us. They told us to do this, therefore we do it. No one mentions Pursume Nisa. Neither answer ties it into sanctifying Hashem's name, publicizing the miracle. It's just not mentioned there. It's a rabbinic authority. It's minog. What is it? It's not, uh, it's not Pirsume Nisa. That's one indication that, in fact, the mitzvah of lighting the menorah is separate from publicizing the nace. Ramosha Feinstein drew on this to, to rule regarding the, the case, which unfortunately is somewhat common, of a person who needs to light menorah and isn't going to have anybody see the menorah. The, uh, what happens if a person gets back late from work or wherever it is, and, uh, and no one's going to see the, uh, the menorah, or as the Gemara puts it, a person who is traveling somewhere, and he stops off in some inn somewhere. The, uh, perhaps there are people who aren't Jewish around, but there's no one Jewish to see the menorah. And they seem to assume that having only non-Jews see the menorah means you didn't fulfill Pursume Nisa, you didn't publicize the Nase. I want to come back to that. That's a key point I want to return to. But that's the assumption that everybody, and certainly Ramosha Feinstein, seems to, to make. And he asks the question, do I light the menorah at all? If it's just me, do I light, it, do I, do I light the, uh, the menorah? Well, we take a look at what happens on Purim regarding reading the Megillah. Let's say you have somebody who is all alone on Purim. Does that person read the Megillah? They don't have a shul. They don't have a minion. Do they read the Do they read the Megillah at all? Yeah. Yes. How do we know? Common sense. The um, so the the Megara, the Gemara Megillah actually records a debate. The um, Rav Asi says one requires ten for Megillah reading. Take a look, please, at source number four on the Hebrew sheets, three on the Hebrew English sheets. 
every time I have to give the different numbers, I regret more and more that I have two different sets of sheets. The uh... Omar Rav. Rav says... Megillah bismana korin osa filu biyachid. Rav says if you're reading Megillah on time, meaning 14th or 15th of Adar, depending on whether you're a walled city or an unwalled city, he says then you uh, then you could read Megillah even alone. Shalom bismana, but if you're reading it early, because remember that the villages, the outlying villages, would read on earlier days in order to be able to get everybody together on the market day. So the, uh, if you're reading it early, baasara, then you need to have a minion, says Rav. Rav Asi Omar Bain Bismana Bain Shalom Bismana Basara. Rav Asi says either way you're supposed to have a minion. Rashi there writes it doesn't mean that it really has to be a minion even within the view of Rav Asi. Take a look at the next source on your sheets. It's number five on the Hebrew only. It's number four on the Hebrew English. Rav Asi Omar Bain Bismana Bain Shalom Bismana. Rav Asi said either way Mitzvah Lachzar Achar Asara. The mitzvah is go get ten. Mishum pirsume nisa, in order to publicize the miracle. Aval ilo ashka chasara, but if you don't find ten, lo amar ravasi dilo likri, ravasi isn't saying then you don't read the Megillah. That's it, no mitzvah since you can't find ten. Shein iser kriyasa biyachid, there's no prohibition against reading the Megillah alone. Ela mitzvah likrosa basara, but the mitzvah is, read it with ten if that's at all possible. Separating out reading the Megillah, and publicizing the miracle of Hanukkah. Once you say, I can read it alone, right? there's no publicity to the world, publicizing it to myself, that's hardly publicity. right? You don't get hired again to do an ad next time if you're only publicizing it to yourself. The, um, so the, the idea seems to be that I fulfill Megillah reading even if there's no element of publicity. That's the way Rashi takes it. There is a discussion in the Rif the, uh, about whether that's really what, uh, what Ravasi means. Maybe he really does believe that 10 is an absolute uh, requirement. Nonetheless, number one, that may not be what Ravasi meant. And number two, we follow Rav. We follow, we follow the view of Rav. You would read Megillah as common sense dictates even if you are, uh, even if you are alone. Well, the same thing is true regarding Hanukkah. Because Pirsume Nisa, publicizing the miracle, is separate from a menorah, and therefore Moshe Feinstein said they, uh, that one should alight, even if he's going to be alone. He pointed to a comment of the Shilte Giborin. If you take a look on your sheets, I believe I brought it. Did I bring it? No, I didn't bring it. Sorry. The... Um, the, the Shilte Giborim writing back in, I'm going to say the, uh, the 13th, maybe 14th century, said that a person is tra- if a person is traveling among... Right, uh, so I did write it. The Sharetzion. The Sharetzion. Oh, because I brought it from the Sharetzion. Okay, so let's do the Sharetzion's digest. The, um, he has a longer discussion of the Shilte Giborim, but if I bothered to bring the Sharetzion, I might as well use it. The, um, thank you. Thank you. Number three on the sheets that are Hebrew only. Number two on the sheets that are Hebrew English. He quotes the view of the Chemed Moshe. Thank you. The, um, the Magen Avram's view, Rav Avram Gambina, writing in the 17th century, said, in fact, you wouldn't like the menorah if you're the only one who's going to see the menorah. But then he quotes the view of the Chemed Moshe, who goes on at length to discuss this issue, and says, Dim If a person forgot to light the menorah, or a person couldn't help it, they, uh, something happened. Below Hidlik, he didn't light until everybody was asleep. So what should you do? You should wake up two or three people, and you should light. He's not satisfied with you waking up one. He wants you to wake up two or three. I'm not really clear on why he requires two or three. I say this somewhat flippantly, that maybe it's so they can gang up on him. And, uh, yeah, but I don't, I, don't, I don't know why he requires two or three. If publicity means I show somebody, then it should just be one. Yeah, what's, what's two or three? I don't really know. Maybe it's because if you wake up two or three people, then the odds are that one of them will be awake long enough to actually see you light the menorah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who says that? Oh, that's a good point. That's a good point. The, um, 
Right, right. This part of the miracle of Hanukkah, we're reliving the battle of the Mizyavnim and the Hashmonoim. Uh, um... Well, he continues to say, the Imi Efshar Lahakitsam, and if you can't wake them up, lo and behold, they, uh, they're sturdy sleepers. Mikamakum Yadlik Vivarech, he says, you light anyway, and you make the bracha. In other words, don't take the cop out answer. The cop out answer is always, well, do the mitzvah, just don't say the bracha. Right? Just light the menorah and don't make a bracha on it. He says, no, light and make a bracha. Because he says, if you were to take the view of the Magen Avram, Avram Gambiner, who says, in fact, that you don't light when you're alone, then then if you were in some place where there was no one around, you didn't even have a household people, you didn't, have even, you didn't even have people from the household there, he says, then you would say, would the Magen Avram really say you don't light if you're off in the middle of nowhere? I haven't seen that, he says, in any authorities, except... The Magen of Rum. The, um, but he says just the opposite. The Shulti Yiborim wrote in the name of the Or Zarua, the Avim Ubein Anachem Levado, Sarach Lahadlik, that even if you're alone among a general population, nonetheless you need to light. Umash Rambi Dekasab came to Pshito Shea, like the Bracha. And from the fact that the Shulti Yiborim just says, of course you light, it sounds like you light with a Bracha. Because otherwise you would have had to say, light without a Bracha. The default when you say light a menorah is, make the Brachos. That's my, that's my assumption. So the ruling that he gives is that you do, Certainly, he says, if you can publicize it, that's a greater thing to do. Because then you fulfill lighting, and you fulfill presuming, so you publicize the miracle. But, he says, I will eat like on Hashem if there's no one around. You shouldn't now nullify the mitzvah. Because, well, there's nobody around to see it. The, uh, he says it's not, it's just not so. Kain near so it appears to me, v'chein noag yin ha'olam, and that's the practice that people follow. That's the Ad Kan Lashon, or the end of the quote from the Shulte Giborim. The, um, that's his, uh, that's his statement. Now, the, um, we're going to come back to this point in a second, because it's not quite so clear. But we have to address a side note. What's the, what's the deadline for lighting menorah? The deadline, the end, the, yeah. When nobody's passing in the street, right? The Gemara says, Ad tichla regel min Until people stop passing in the street, right? It's actually a little bit more elaborate than that. The, um, if you take a look on your sheets, it's number six on the sheets, with only Hebrew five on the sheets that are Hebrew and English. Ad tichla regel min Until travelers cease from the market. Ve'ad kama. How long is that? Sorry? Yeah, it's the second six on the Hebrew only. Thanks, I needed you to spell that one out too. The Amar Rabba Bar Rachana Amar Rabbi Yochanan and the Kalyo Rigla de Tarmudoi. So Rabbi Yochanan tells us the deadline is until the Tarmudoi stop walking around in the street. That's the literal statement. I'm going to come back to those Tarmudoi because they actually matter a great deal for where we're going with this. But he says until the the uh, the Tarmudoi walkers halt in the street. Well. If publicity is not a requirement of the mitzvah, then why do I have to stop when people stop walking around in the streets? Why give me a time limit at all? I can light all night. Why, why am I limited to until the time of day finish walking around in the street? As a matter of fact, Tosvos rules that you have to light at an earlier time. Once people stop walking around in the street, it's all over. Lighting is, lighting is gone. Take a look at the Rambam. It's source number 7 on the Hebrew only. Source number 6 on the Hebrew and English. Shachach al-Hizid. If a person forgot or intentionally did not light. Below Hidlikim Shkiyasachame. Did not light at sunset. There's a whole other discussion about whether sunset is really the earliest time. Right? That's its own discussion. Whereas sunset is a little before the stars come out. But he says you didn't light. You continue and light until people cease to travel in the market. The How long is that? Oh yes. So he says half an hour or more. The Agar uh, Once the time passes, no more lighting. Well, why not? Is this maybe proof? that we say that Pursume Nisa is an inherent part of lighting, and you can't light if you're not going to publicize the miracle, would he then say, you also don't light alone, and you don't light if you're off in the middle of nowhere? Is he really going to say that? Maybe. But there's another possibility. Another possibility is that this is simply the way the Chachamim designed the mitzvah. Meaning, this is a mitzvah de Rabbanan. 
granted our links to the biblical in terms of publicizing and following the, the, what, the, what the Rabbanon say, fundamentally it's a rabbinic mitzvah. And the Rabbanon get to define how you perform the mitzvah. And they say, this is a mitzvah for the beginning of the night. Yes, it's true. It's true that you could end up lighting later on without publicity, just according to simple logic. Nonetheless, they designed the mitzvah not to be performed in that way. And the Rabbanan do that frequently, not frequently, but they do that sometimes with mitzvahs. For example, when it comes to Kriya Shema at night, to saying Shema at night, there is a view that one is supposed to say Shema at night before Chatzos, before the middle of the night even though the nighttime Shema should be really for all night long. Right? There's a third view that says only in the beginning of the night, but I'm not addressing that right now. The view of the Chachamim as presented in the first Mishnah in Brachos is you only say Shema at night until the middle of the night. Why? Anybody remember? Why do they say only until the middle of the night? Because people will forget. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah, because you'll come home and you'll say, well, I'm going to eat a little bit. I'll take a nap a little bit, and eventually I'll get around to saying Shema. And what will happen is eventually I'll get around to getting a good night's sleep. That's what's going to happen. And I won't end up saying Shema. So therefore they said, say it by the middle of the night. So much so, that they actually said, don't say it later. There's a whole discussion between the Chachamim and Rabban Gamliel. Do you say it later? We say in practice, if you miss saying it by the middle of the night, you do say it, uh, you do say it later in the night. We do say you could say it until, until uh, dawn. But the position of the Rabbanon is don't say it after midnight, even though technically that should fit. Nonetheless, they have a special concern. They want us to make sure that we are going to say Shema on time, and therefore they say don't do it later. And similarly, they want us to make sure that we're going to light the menorah and have people see it, and therefore they say that's your time for lighting the menorah. That's another way to understand the Rambam, even though in practice we actually disagree. In practice, we do say that one who missed it in the beginning of the night continues to say it all night long. It's source number eight on the Hebrew only sheets, source number, uh, uh, source number seven on the Hebrew and English. The Ramah says, Yesh Omrim, some say, that nowadays we light indoors anyway. So we're already not, not, not emphasizing this uh, idea of publicity. There's no need for us to be, be careful about lighting before people stop traveling in the market. It doesn't matter. We're indoors anyway. But it's still good to be careful nowadays. That's the Ramah. He means indoors, indoors. The ones who are worried about danger and are lighting where no one else in the public can see it. Yeah. And the Shulchan Aruch, the Machaber of Yosef Karo, says, He says, that's only initial advice. But if the time passed and you didn't light, then you would light all night long. So, to summarize what we have so far, we've said that lighting and pirsum hanes are two separate elements. We said that you would light, it seems, even if you couldn't publicize the miracle. And we said that the source for publicizing the miracle at all is Kiddush Hashem, sanctifying Hashem's name. One parenthetical note that I think is interesting. Once you tell me that there's a separate mitzvah of Pirsume Nisa, publicizing the nace, right? If, they, if we say that's true, could I just invent my own Pirsume Nisa? Could I invent my own practices? Let's say I decide that Pirsume Nisa means for me to take a billboard... And right on it, Al Hanisim, or something, you know, some similar description of what happened on Hanukkah, and put it up next to the highway. Maybe that should be my uh, my Pirsume Nisa. Sorry, they um, better not. Okay, they. Um, I the reason why this, I think I, I think I got the sense of what that was anyway. Yeah. Right. So let's say it's not. It's not, no menorah appears on this sign. No olives were crushed in the making of, for the making of this billboard. The, um, this is simply a billboard. It matters a great deal. Because we say in Halakha that Pirsume Nisa, publicizing the miracles of Hanukkah, overrides many other mitzvahs. 
So maybe putting on my billboard overrides many other mitzvahs. Also, this Fasemis entertains this idea. The Gera Rebbe, he, uh, he throws out this idea, but he also throws out this idea. The, um, he says, you can't do it. He says, I, it's, it's nice to publicize the miracles of Hanukkah. That's certainly true. But, um, but he says that in practice, this would not override the, uh, it would not have the same power that the rabbinically enacted publicity methods actually have. It's source number nine on the Hebrew only sheets. It's source number eight on the Hebrew and English sheets. The Opersume Nisa Bali Mitzvah, publicizing the miracle without performing one of these mitzvah activities. Like if you just want to add publicity to the mitzvah. He says that clearly would not override anything else. It doesn't have the authority that lighting menorah has. We talk about lighting menorah as being so important it would override buying wine for Kiddush. The, uh, we wouldn't do that for you know, your billboard up on the side of the, uh, of the highway. Okay. I want to return to the case of the traveler who was alone, who is living in a in a in a in an inn somewhere in a hotel somewhere, and he wants to know whether he should light, so that his non Jewish neighbors there are able to, to see the menorah. Is there an element of Pearsome, is there an element of publicizing the miracle? What would you say? I hear a no. Yeah, I hear a no. Anybody anybody? Agree? Disagree? Yes. Yes. Okay, now we have a fight. Okay. We didn't even have to wake anybody up. Although maybe I did along the way. The, um, the, so what's the reason to say no? Right. So is there any, is there any benefit to having them see it? No. No. Okay, and? They're still publicizing. Right. So the um, this is exactly the question that I'd like to, to spend the next several minutes discussing. The um, Rosalovechik is quoted as saying that there is a mitzvah of publicizing and lighting the menorah for non-Jews to see as well. The, um, that's the position that, that Rav Soloveitchik establishes, and he quotes you several sources that seem to support to this idea. The, um, for example. Take a look, please, on your sheets at source number 10 on the Hebrew only, source number 9 on the Hebrew and English. I mentioned the Tarmodoi before. Rabbi Yochanan said that you light until the Rigla de Tarmodoi, the travelers, the Tarmodian travelers, uh, leave the marketplace. So Rashi says, who are they? The Tarmodoi are its Shem Uma. Tarmo, tar, the, Tarmoda would be the name of the nation. Tarmodoi are people of Tarmoda. Malakte Eitzim Dakim. Their practice was that they would collect small pieces of wood. Umis Akvin Bashuk, Ajahochim Bnei Ashuk Levatayim Mishacha Sheikha. They would wait out in the marketplace until everybody went home at dark and realized, hey, you know what? We need firewood. Umavirim Bibatayim, or they go to light the fire in their homes. Ukshatsuichim Eitzim, when they need wood, Yotzim Bakon and Mehem, they go out and buy from these Tarmodoi. So the Tarmodoi is, the, uh, is, is some nationality, and they're not Jewish. It's some Uma, some nation, says Rashi. So, the Rav argued, the, um, the mitzvah of lighting is light as long as these Tarmodoi, who are not Jewish, are out there in the marketplace. If I care that these Tarmodoi should see the menorah, then clearly it's for non-Jews as well. Similarly, in Al Hanisim, we say we want to create a great name for Hashem. Be'olamecha in your world, Hashem, not just to Jews, but to the uh, to the world at large. Rishim and Sofa, writing in the in the responses, Orus Chuva makes an interesting point the, uh, along these lines. Take a look, please, at source number twelve in the Hebrew, only eleven in the Hebrew and English. He says, Vihine. Hadar Bein Goyim, somebody who lives among the nations, nearly Mechuyav Lahadlik Al Pesach Beisom Ibachutz, or Bachalon Asmucha. It appears to me that he is also obligated to light at the entrance to his house outside, the, uh, or in a window close to the streets so that they can see, so that the world can see. The Esparsim Hanes Bein Goyim, so that the miracle will be publicized among the nations. Shayishalu Maihu, because they'll ask, hey, what's that about? Uh, and that way, they will, they will know, because it will become known to them, this event of Hanukkah and the, and the miracle itself. And he says, I'll prove it to you. I have a pasuk. 
Yechezkel, Vies Gadilti, Vies Kadishti, Benodati, Leine, Goyim Rabim. Hashem says, My name will be elevated and I will be sanctified. No, Yis Gadal, Vies Kadash. It's the same language that we use in Kaddish. The, uh, and I will become known before the eyes of many nations. Not just us. Yeah, and that's what he's pointing to. The Kami Kravs, the Marim he says there are many Sukkim that support this idea. That Hashem cares about the desecration of his name among the nations and about the sanctification of his name among them, right? What is, what is Moshe's argument? Lama Yomru Agoyim, right? What the nations are going to say, right? Lama Yomru Mitzrayim, what's Egypt going to say? Clearly, Hashem cares about his reputation, not just among us, but among the nations as a whole. So Shimon Sofer says, Absolutely. Go ahead. Light the menorah in front of uh, in front of the world. He also parts out the Tarmodoi. There is an alternate explanation, by the way, of the Tarmodoi that suggests that the reason to light then is because there are Jews who are going out to get firewood from the Tarmodoi. So that's the opposing view. The um, but that would seem to, that would seem to indicate that there is in fact a mitzvah of lighting for the world to see, not just for Jews to see. The Lubavitcher Rebbe had an interesting thought on this in his Sichos. He suggested that, and uh, on Purim, yes, you knew that was coming with the big menorahs, thank you, the, and the billboard. The, um, but he said, you note that there's an opposition between Hanukkah and Purim. On Purim, what we do is internal. We read the Megillah in shul. No one says, let's go out there and read the Megillah out in the streets. But on Hanukkah, the menorah is available for everybody to uh, to see. So he suggests it be, it's be, he suggested that it's because on on Purim we're celebrating physical survival. Everyone fights for physical survival. That's not uniquely Jewish. The, um, whereas on Hanukkah we fight for spiritual survival, and that's a special message of adopting the Torah, which is an, which is an important message for the world. You can quibble and quarrel with it. It's a nice right Torah. The, um, but in any case, those views. The Rav's view, Rav Shimon Sofer's view, the Lubavitcher Rebbe's view, indicate, yes, I should light for the world to say, Pursume Nisa includes my non-Jewish neighbors. However, I have to say that they are the minority. Not the non-Jewish neighbors. The view that says you should light for them. And the, uh, maybe that's off of certain parts of Bathurst. Not in, not in general. The, um, the, the general approach, Rav Moshe Feinstein certainly, um, is that there's no mitzvah of lighting for the world to see. The mitzvah is just for me to light among, uh, among Jews. Well, now I need to understand why. Because Rosh Shimon Sofer makes a compelling case that Kiddush Hashem is meant to be for the world. Kiddush Hashem is not just meant to be for, uh, for my family. See, it's important to go back to the sources on Kiddush Hashem itself. And you take a look on your sheets at source number... Yeah, this is a tricky one. Source number 18 on the Hebrew only. Source number 16 on the Hebrew and English. It's a Gemara in Sanhedrin 74b. Okay, 16 on the Hebrew and English, 18 on the Hebrew only. Amr Rabbi Yaakov, Amr Rabbi Yochan, Rabbi Yaakov cites Rabbi Yochan is saying, Ein parhesia p'chusa me'asara b'nei adam. Public means... Ten people. Now, he's discussing a particular case of Kiddush Hashem. Kiddush Hashem, we like to think of as go out and behave well in public. Right? That's Kiddush Hashem. We tell our kids when they're in school and you're going to go out on a trip somewhere, right? Make sure you behave properly. The, uh, it's, going to, it's an issue of Kiddush Hashem. And we hope that works. The, um, the, it does sometimes. Right. And that's right. So that's this. That's this gemara exactly. Thank you. The um, the more morbid element of Kiddush Hashem is one that you just mentioned. The um, and that is the following. We are taught that there are three mitzvahs for which one is supposed to give up his life rather than violate those laws. Right? Adultery, idolatry, and murder are the uh, the big three. However, there's another rule, which is that if someone is trying to get me to violate the Torah in public, then I must also be willing to surrender my life rather than violate, that, that, uh, the, rather than violate the Torah. There's more to it than that. It's more complex than that. The, uh, but that's the basic concept. So the question is, what does public mean? And that's where this Gemara comes into play. He says public means ten people. Now, is that ten people or is that ten Jews? So he says, Shita, right? it's not ten men. That seems fairly clear. 
the, um, they're, not, they're not about to say Kaddish for this person who just gave up his life rather than no, the, um, so he says Pshita Yisraelim Ba'inon he says it's clear that it must be Yisraelim ten Jews why? The Pasuk from the Chumash, I will be sanctified before the, in front of or among the Jewish people. That's our Pasuk for Kiddush Hashem. Well, if that's our Pasuk for Kiddush Hashem, it's only among Jews. And in fact, when the Rambam codifies the mitzvah of Kiddush Hashem, in his Sefer HaMitzvos, the, uh, it's Mitzvah Sasei Tas, it's his ninth mitzvah, the Rambam says that the, uh, the mitzvah is specifically among Jews, among ten Jews, from that Pasuk, so does the Sefer HaChinuch, so does the Sefer HaMitzvah Sakatan, they all take it as the idea that Kiddush Hashem is something for Jews to see, not for the world. Interestingly, there may be a mitzvah for non-Jews as well along these lines, regarding their mitzvahs. Remember, the non-Jews have the, uh, the seven mitzvahs. They might have a mitzvah of Kiddush Hashem as well. Take a look, please, at source number, this one source up from where we were. So it's number 17 on the Hebrew only, number 15 on the Hebrew and English. Bo mi name Rabbi Ami. They asked Rabbi Ami a question. Ben Noach Mitsuva Kedusha Sashem or Ain Mitsuva Kedusha Sashem? Is someone who is not Jewish instructed about this mitzvah of sanctifying Hashem's name and not violating his laws in public or not? So Amar Abaye Tashma Abaye says, Look, Shavu Mitzvah Sistavu Bnei Noach. We learned they have seven mitzvahs, and one of them wasn't Kedusha Hashem. Vim Isa, if this were really true, Tam Nehavin, then you would have eight mitzvahs. So clearly not. Huh, that was easy. The uh, Amar Le Rava, Rava says, no, no, it doesn't work that way. In Uvachol Abizrahu, because it could be, you would say, this is a function of each mitzvah. In other words, they have a mitzvah of don't kill. So part of the mitzvah is do, of don't kill is sanctify Hashem's name by refusing to kill. It's part of each mitzvah. So the Gemara says, well, my Havi Allah, so what's the rule? I, the truth is, we don't have Noachai's lining up with this question. The, um, but theoretically, what would we do if someone asked the question? So Amr Rabad the Bar-Ava, Rabad the Bar-Ava says, I'll give you a proof. Amri be Rab, they said it in the yeshiva, from the following source. There is indeed a case in Tanakh in which someone who isn't Jewish comes to a Jew, in this case to a Navi actually, to Elisha, and asks him, what should I do? I am being compelled to violate one of my mitzvot, Avodah Zarah in particular, I'm being compelled to participate in idolatry, and am I supposed to give up my life? What should I do? Naaman, the famous Naaman, right, the one who gets dipped in the, uh, in the Yarden and he's healed of his saras, comes to Elisha and says, I don't know what to do. For this thing, Hashem should forgive your servant, meaning himself. My master, the king, comes into the house of idolatry to bow there. He leans on me, and I bow too. What can I do? Uchsiv and Elisha's response is, Vayom Arlo, Lech He says, Go in peace. He says, What, are you gonna, what am I going to tell you to do? They, um, he doesn't say, Give up your life. He doesn't say, You have to worry about, it, about, uh, about Kiddush Hashem. Vim Isa, if a non Jew is instructed, in fact, in Kiddush Hashem, Lo Lame Alay. So you shouldn't, you, you shouldn't say to him, Go in peace. He should say, Sorry, pal. They, uh, you can't do that again. So the Gemara says, well, maybe not. That may not be an adequate proof. Maybe Habitzina Habifar Hesia. That may be considered to be private. That may not be considered a public event. That may be considered a private event. What happens there in the idolatrous area, and therefore he's exempt from having to give up his life the, uh, in, order to, uh, in order to assist. So, what, we, what emerges there is, and in fact, Tostos concludes he's not obligated to give up his life. The Rambam brings it as well. The, um, what, what that shows is there is an idea in general for an Akum, for someone who isn't Jewish, to give up his life rather than violate one of his mitzvahs in public. What gets Naaman off the hook is the fact that it's private. It's a private worship ceremony. And there's a whole discussion about why it was private. That's, that's its, own, its own element. But the point is, the non-Jew also has this mitzvah of Kiddush Hashem in public. Well, how do I define public? For him. Is it also ten Jews? 
So the um, the the mincha the minchas chinuch suggests that the Ramban's view is that yes, it's actually ten Jews. The um, the Ran disagrees. The um, but the point anyway out of all of this is that the Gemara says that Kiddush Hashem Pirsume Nisa is in front of ten Jews in general. Whether it is for the non-Jew or not is a side note, but in general it's supposed to be for in front of Jews. And you think about the other cases of Pirsume Nisa publicizing the nace. Right? We have the four cups of wine that we mentioned before at the Seder. We don't invite in the world to go see the four cups. We don't invite in the world to hear Megillus Esther. So, so far, I would give one answer as to why the menorah might not be for the world. Even if I believe that Kiddush Hashem... I'm sorry, the, um, not even if I believe. One reason why the menorah may not be for the world, for those who disagree with the Rav, the position of Ramosha, is because Kiddush Hashem is among Jews. There's one problem with that. Aside from the proofs we brought before, like about the Tamodai, there are all sorts of lines in the Gemara about Kiddush Hashem, which indicate Kiddush Hashem is a mitzvah among non-Jews. I'll give you my favorite. It's a Gemara in Yoma. If you're looking at the Hebrew sheets, it's 19. If you're looking at the Hebrew English, it's 17. A beautiful passage of Gemara. The Torah says, Hashem You shall love Hashem your God. And the Gemara explains, This means that the name of heaven should be beloved because of your deeds. That's my mitzvah, to make the name of Hashem beloved. That a person should read and study Torah. And serve Torah scholars. And he should interact gently with other people. There's another edition of the Gemara that adds in also. He should interact honestly with other people. We like that. The Ma Brios Om Rosolov. And then what will people say about him? Ashrei Aviv Shalim Dotara. Ashrei Rabo Shalim Dotara. How wonderful his parents taught him Torah. His Rebbe taught him Torah. Oilam Labrios Shalolam do Torah. It's bad for people when they don't learn Torah. Ploni Shalim this person who was taught Torah, look how pleasant are his ways. Look how refined he is. All of our of Omer, and regarding such a person, the Pasuk says in Yeshaya, Bayomerli Abdi Ata Yisrael Sherbachas Ba'ar, Hashem said to me, You are my servant, I am glorified by you and your deeds. That's what we want. That's Kiddush Hashem. And it didn't say anything here about in front of Jews. It said, Mahabrios, O Mrosala. What do people in general say about him? It isn't about Jews. It's about the world. And we, uh, we could go on and on, but I won't because it's getting late. The, um, but we have all sorts of texts that show that Kiddush Hashem is not just among Jews. Kiddush Hashem is among the world. So I have to throw out my first answer. My first answer was, you don't like menorah in front of the world because after all, the, um, the, the Kiddush Hashem is only to Jews. Frankly, I don't buy it. It's, just, it's not there. The evidence isn't there. We can offer, though, a separate answer. A, uh, a, second, uh, a second approach. And the second approach would be that the, um, the, in terms of the goal of Kiddush Hashem and the goal of Pirsume Nisa, when we do Pirsume Nisa with the cups of wine at the Seder, do we just pick up four cups of wine and drink them and that's it? No. We have the whole Magid, Right. What happens if somebody sits down at the table on Seder night, he's very eager. He loves this mitzvah of the Arvacosos. He's very into the grape juice. And he says, you know what? I want to fulfill this mitzvah right away. And he takes four cups, fills them up with grape juice, and downs them. One, two, three, four. That was clear position. Yeah, that's not the mitzvah of Arvacosos. It has to be with the story. Right? You can't do that without the Magid. Okay, what about, um, what about, what about Purim? The, um, on Purim, the, I'm not doing the Abacosos on Purim, that's a separate discussion. The, um, the, what about, what about on Purim? On Purim, we read the Megillah, right? We retell the entire story so that the participants in this actually will become familiar with the story of the nace. What about the non-Jew who travels down the street and sees my menorah? Is he going to have a clue what Hanukkah is about? He might ask. He might ask. If he comes knocking on your door, what are you going to do? (laughs) 
Ron Yantem. The, um, the truth of the matter is that, yeah, I'm, I moved here from Allentown, Pennsylvania. Allentown is Pennsylvania Dutch country. The, uh, and their practice is that pretty much for all of December, they all light a single candle. It tends to be electric, but sometimes real candles. And they leave them in their window the whole month long. They have a candle in their window. So that the first night of Hanukkah is wonderful. Everybody lights the menorah. The, um, but, yeah, I have no idea why they light their candle. I lived there for eight years. I never you know, knocked on somebody's door to say, excuse me, what are you doing? Why are you lighting that candle? The answer may well be because my neighbors are. I don't know. But I have no idea what the symbolism is of this candle. They, um, and, frankly, they never knocked on my door to ask me about the menorah. They, um, not the first night and not any other night. The, the idea of Pirsum Hanais as Kiddush Hashem, as sanctifying Hashem's name, must have some kind of retelling of the story. There has to be some information passed along. Otherwise, you don't know what in the world this menorah is. Yeah, the Jews have some holiday, I know, because I heard on the radio. I listened to 680, and it said it's the Festival of Lights. But beyond that, I mean, there has to be some, some publicity of the, uh, of the nace itself. We say this regarding the mitzvah specifically. For example, because we're a little short on time, I'm not going to go into the text itself, but I brought it here. The Gemara discusses whether you read Megillah in a language that somebody understands. In other words, let's say someone comes to Shul who doesn't understand the Megillah when, when he hears it read. All right? He sits there in Shul for Megillah reading. Did he fulfill the mitzvah of Megillah? The answer is yes. But Rashi says, you know why? Because he's going to turn to the person next to him and say, what is this? And that person is going to explain it during Haman. So he doesn't miss any of the words, of course. But the, um, but the idea is that you'll actually inquire and hear what the explanation is, why it is that we're, uh, that we're reading the, uh, the Megillah, what the story is about. Tosos makes the same point regarding menorah. We know that the Gemara presents three different ways to light the menorah. The first view is one candle, this is what the Pennsylvania Dutch do, one candle every night, and that's it. Not adding, not subtracting, not one candle per person, one candle, period. That's it. Then we have the second view, right? What's the second view? Right. The second view is a candle for each member of the household. And then the third view is the one that people generally do, which is we add one candle a night. Yes, Beishamai has a view that we descend. Not, not my point right now. The point is that you're lighting a certain number of candles to show what night of Hanukkah it is. So, Tosvos raises the question. If you're lighting one candle per person and one candle per night, how in the world are people going to have any clue when they look in your window? What, light, what night of Hanukkah it is. I mean, not for Tosis. When they look at the, you know, what you have outside the house. The, um, you know, how are they going to have any clue what night it is? And so he stresses, this only works if you're lighting one for the entire household. Now today we have our fancy menorahs and we could put one menorah here and one menorah there. My point is that Tosis takes it as a given that we only add candles per night if that's actually going to show the world what night of Hanukkah it is. Not if it's just going to lead to confusion. The person looking has to understand what it is that we're doing. The, um, and indeed, if you go back for a second to the source that I brought in source number 12 on the Hebrew sheets, in number 11 on the Hebrew and English, Rav Shimon Sofer said that, mentioned this as well. When he talked about the mitzvah being in front of non-Jews as well, he said you have to light the entrance to your home outside or by a window that's closed to the public. The esparse manes ben agoyim, the miracle will be publicized among the nations. She'yishalu mayhu. They'll ask, what is this? They're going to knock on your door. I'm sending them all to you. The uh, and that way, the deed will become known. The miracle will become known. That's the idea. Part of this, I think, goes back to a philosophical point about what we mean when we say Kiddush Hashem. What are we trying to accomplish with Kiddush Hashem, sanctifying Hashem's name? What's our goal? What do we want to have come out of it? When I sanctify Hashem's name in the eyes of some person out there, what do I want to achieve? Yeah, that people will think that God is wonderful. We don't want to use the words people will think God is great, but I hate to tell you that's exactly what we're saying. The, um, that's, what we, uh, that's, that's what we're saying, right? That's one idea. What's another idea? Sorry? Monotheism, one God. Monotheism, one God. But that's, that, that fills in, fits into this. It's attracting people to Torah. Attracting people to follow what Hashem says. If I take the view that the purpose of Kiddush Hashem is to make people want to follow the mitzvahs, 
then it's for us. Because we're not proselytizers. We're not looking to win converts. If they want to come, wonderful. We accept them with open arms. But we're not you know, out there trying to convert people. The, um, that's, that's one school of thought. The other school of thought is that it's just that people should say, oh, wow, that's amazing. Look at that. This thing is for real. There were miracles. And in that case, it applies to the world as a whole. It's two different types of Kiddush Hashem. So in summary, the, um, we understand that what we're trying to accomplish on Hanukkah when we light the menorah is, number one, lighting the menorah because that's a mitzvah. The Rabbanon told us to do it. And number two, Kiddush Hashem, that we want to sanctify Hashem's name. We understand as well that that Kiddush Hashem defines to a certain extent the limits of the mitzvah in terms of the time in which we're going to light it and trying to display it in public. But also that, there's a major view presented here. I quoted Rav Moshe Feinstein, as always, for the last word, please ask Rabbi Stern, he's the Mara de Asra. But the, the position of Rav Moshe is that you would light even if no one was going to see it. Because you still have the mitzvah of lighting even if you don't have Pirsumay Nisa, even if you haven't publicized it. First stop is, wake up two or three people and good luck. The uh, second stop is to light anyway, even if you're alone. Then as far as this issue of, is the Pirsumay Nisa for the nations as a whole, is Hanukkah a light to the nations or just to us? There is a view that it's a light to the nations. We quoted Rav Soloveitchik, we quoted Rav Shimon Sofer. There is indeed such a view that it's for the world at large. And there's also a view that suggests not, either because they believe Kiddush Hashem is a mitzvah of an ikdashti b'soch b'nei Yisrael, Hashem should be sanctified among us, or because the menorah doesn't convey enough to the onlooker. The person outside who's looking in and seeing my menorah just isn't going to get anything out of it. He doesn't get the story out of it. And therefore, it's not, uh, it's not for him. One, uh, one final thought. The, uh, from the Sfas Emes. The Sfas Emes says that there, is a, that there is a precedent in the Torah itself for Pirsume Nisa, and that is the Karban Toda. If, a, if something happens to me, I'm saved from some danger, I'm supposed to bring a Karban Toda, thanks offering. I go to the base Hamikdash, I bring a Karban, I bring 40 loaves of bread, the, uh, I share it with people, and so we celebrate what, uh, what Hashem did for us. And the same thing is true when we do this. It's like our Karban Toda. And he also said it's an extension of the miracle itself. When we publicize the miracle that Hashem performed for us, we extend the nace. Nace in its literal meaning. The word nace doesn't mean miracle. The word nace means a banner, right? A flag. Something out there for the world to see. So Hashem did that in the beginning when He performed the miracle for everybody to see. And when we promote it, for the world or for the Jews, however you take Pursume Nisa, then we extend that miracle into the world around us, continuing the illumination provided by the Nase. Thank you very much. Next week, God willing, we have a seminar at Orchayim. We're going to have multiple classes. It'll be starting with Minion at, um, I think we said 8 o'clock. Does that sound right? 8.15, thank you. The, um, but you, know, you can dive in here, and then you can go over there. I don't want to pull anybody out of the minion here. The, um, but then you can go over there. There will be breakfast. There will be shiurim by several of the Avrechim. Uh, Rabbi Weber uh, from Clan Park. Rabbi Gemara as well will be giving shiurim. And I want to also make sure to mention, um, as many of you already know, many of you already attend, um, Itamar Zolberg, one of our Avrechim, gives a shiur here on Monday evenings.